Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making another great alcohol stove. And the best part is, this one can be used immediately when you're done building. Hey, making a project like this is perfect for a lot of reasons. There's emergencies, camping, hiking, exploring, power failures, disasters, or just having some fun. This is a good skill to know. In prior videos, which are linked in the description below, I showed you how to make the penny stove and the basic stove but I used JB Weld on both of those as an adhesive. Today, we're not gonna use glue and you won't need a primer pan to get it lit. Just like in previous builds, we need to start out with two empty and clean beverage cans. These aluminum cans are great and we're gonna start out by taking one of them and cutting out the bottom inside that innermost ridge. You can score it and pop it out or you can do just like I did and take a box cutter and start carving around and then go back with some kind of a file and just get rid of the extra burrs and material. I have found that these two steps actually work out much better when I do it before I cut the sidewall out of the can because the next step is making the height of the burner that we're gonna use itself. For this particular stove, I'm going with about an inch and a half wide from the first end of the bottom of the can. I'm gonna mark this distance on the first can as well as the second can, but for the portion that I'm using at the top, I'm making it just a little bit bigger. There's multiple ways to cut your can free along the line, including the score and pop method, but this method I like is a little bit easier. All you have to do is cut it around with a box cutter higher than the line, and then go back later with some scissors. Do note, I also took out the sidewall of the can because we're gonna use that later as well. To clean up the edge right down to the line, I like to slowly turn the can around as I cut until I get a nice, smooth, even line that is flat when I set the can down on the cut surface. Once you have both sections of the can cut out, go back and double check your lines and clean up any rough spots. Also, inside that top portion, this is a great time to go back with a file and clean up any additional little burrs that you find once you can look at it from the inside. I'm gonna rough in 16 spots for burner jets by starting off marking four spots equally distant apart. Then gonna mark equal distant between each of those four spots. And then lastly, equal distance between each of the eight spots that were already drawn. To make the burner holes, all I'm gonna do is take a push pin and gradually start to push it in. I started off making them a little bit smaller, but went back after my first run and opened them fully up to the size of the push pin itself. Cool user tip. If the tip of your pin is not quite sharp enough to get through easily, grab a sharpening stone or a piece of sandpaper and file down that tip. Once it's a bit sharper, you'll find it goes through the can quite a bit easier. With our burner holes complete, we want to go back and start building the inner wall of our stove itself. In order to do this, we need to get a section of that can that we took out that's just a little bit wider than the higher portion of our stove. In this case, I'm going to mark off a spot that's about 1.7 inches wide because this is the height of my inner wall for my can. I'm going to carefully cut to make sure that I've got a clean line on both sides of this so that it's nice and smooth and we'll get a good seal once everything is put together. We're gonna roll that inner wall back into a tube and set it down into the ring in the bottom of the can and get it sized just right so that it fits quite snugly. Next, we wanna mark the two spots on the inner wall where the end pieces overlap. When you unroll the ring, you're gonna find the midpoint and then mark that on both of these two ends. Go ahead and grab your scissors and cut halfway down each of these lines to the midpoint section as shown in the inset picture to the bottom left. Because we made both of those cuts from opposite sides, we'll be able to roll the ring back up and then slide them together and it will hold very well with the two pieces of the end inside. I like to go ahead and double check my fit inside that ridge in the bottom of the can, then pull the inner wall back out and cut these three little notches. These are actually gonna create the weep holes that allow the fuel to be pulled into the intersection of the wall of the can or the stove, which allows the fuel to move up to the jets. Go ahead and put the inner wall back in and make sure you can see some opening at each of those triangles. Using the leftover portion of the sidewall of the original can, we're gonna cut some shims. They don't have to be exact sizes, we just need these to be able to fit down in between the two cans to help us slide them together. Before we assemble this though, I wanna stretch out that bottom piece a little bit and I'm gonna do it with a full can. Just push and twist and then maybe start to slightly twist it out to an angle and that will help to expand the bottom piece and make the top piece fit in much easier. We're on the home stretch, put the inner wall back in place, put the top piece down, angling it in just a little bit, and then slide some shims in from the side angles. Gradually push that top piece down inside and once it's seated, 
pull the shims out and keep pushing it down. Make sure that that inner wall lines up very well with both of the inner ridges at the top and bottom portions before you get it finally set into place. Once that is done, you can use this immediately because you don't have to wait for any kind of a glue or adhesive to dry. And what I find extra cool is you just made a fully functional stove without the use of any electrical tools. Now simply grab your fuel, pour some inside, and light. This is definitely the point where you want to use some extreme caution because this is fire and you're using an open source burner this time, which if you tip it over, will spill and can start a fire. Hey, here's a fun little extra for this build. I cut the bottom out of another can and used that to cover the opening to the stove. That helps to force the fuel up and out the jets. Please note that I'm doing this test on a stone, which will disperse heat, and I have a fire extinguisher at the ready. You always want to use this in an area where you don't have to worry about something catching fire. In my next test, I'm using about 15 ml of the 90% rubbing alcohol because I wanted to get an idea of how long this will take to burn. Here's an extra user tip. If you apply a little bit of heat to the outside bottom of the can, it will help to vaporize the fuel quicker and get it up to the jets. I have found that this burner type is very versatile and very functional. I love the fact that it's so easy to light. In fact, this 15 ml that I put in here for this test ran a full nine minutes. That's a good burn. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.